What is up everybody? It's Kova from Tweak Music Tips and we are so excited to bring you a new video on the brand new Rain Performer DJ controller with motorized platters. Now you may have watched other videos, but what separates this video from the others is we had live Q&A from our DJ audience asking about the key features that most of you have been having questions about. In addition, we had Mojax, Cleveland Terry, and in music brands, Jake Hill, going over this unit in detail from the motorized platters, the onboard effects, where the buttons are located and the overall layout of the DJ controller. And if you stick around, we're gonna go over the four different unique ways that the Rain Performer has control over Serato's stem integration. During the video, if you guys have any questions or comments on the unit, please make sure to add it in the comment section. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please make sure to like and subscribe. Well, enough of the chit chat, let's jump into the video. First, let me say thank you so much for everybody's patience. We waited until we had enough stock for everybody, but we wanted to release this thing like in May, but then people be waiting for it. It's kind of a balancing act. Let me just go through a, a couple things on the performer and then we'll just take some questions. So let me just hit the main things that make the performer special. Obviously the platters, we talked on this already, it ships with like all these slip rings. So you can kind of stack them up how you see fit to get your kind of dial in your feel with the platters and your slip and, and what you prefer. We say, you know, just try to stick with two, combination of two. But uh, for me, I just use one. I use the one white ring. It uh, feels like a butter rug to me. I like the spin back on it. So the, the platters, they're, they're motorized, obviously. It's solid aluminum. And then it has torque adjustment in the menu. So it's high torque or low torque. If you're coming from another controller that's maybe not as torquey as this and you want to get kind of used to the, the high torque, you can dial it down to low torque to get comfortable with it. Then you can dial it up to rain torque, which is high torque. But I think one of the coolest things, and it's one of those things where we wanted to kind of keep it under wraps. That's why we kind of wanted to save some magic for launch day. And those are the up faders. So on the, the rain four, use a different style of up faders. These are brand new. They're called precision feel faders. You can see the fader section here. So these are the precision feel faders. They use the rail and the carrier of the mag four, but they have a side mounted fader on a metal circuit board. You're kind of a new breed of fader. So the mag four is still here. It's a magnetic with like the house sensors and things like that. And it sits on the two rails with the, the carrier. These are the same design. They're just not magnetic as far as the sound pickup. They use a traditional kind of fader, but they use the dual rails, side mounted fader on a circuit board. So that's why they're super light and you can adjust the tension with that magnet you saw. You can also dial in inside your settings, the cut in and the curve. So if you wanted a really sharp cut in at the top, you can go 100% on your curve, reverse the cut in. It's really sharp and they actually feel like a nice quality crossfader. They're good faders. Also, uh, kind of the other key features, we did add an external tension adjust for the crossfader. That's why you see this little bump out right here. And that's so that the, the tension pad can push against the, the fader to create that tension. We also added the stem level EQ, and that's a quick quick shift plus headphone Q, and that turns the EQ section into a, instead of a three band EQ, it controls your uh, vocals, your melody, and your drums with the EQ. So you can boost or reduce uh, instead of just fully cutting them off like the other Sims pad modes. And the last thing, we did add the fader effects from the 70 A-Track Signature Edition so that you could take advantage of these new precision felt faders. So we've got roll, we've got pitch, ring modulator, and all these tone generators that when enabled, turn these precision feel faders into kind of linear controls for those effects. It levels up that performance grade for, you know, routines or, or performance DJs that want to play it as more like an instrument. So in a nutshell, that's like the primary newness of the performer. But really it's all about the quality of the platters and the different display modes and things like that you get with the screens. And honestly, one of my favorite things, you have library view. So as you're scrolling with the knob, you can go through your Serato crates without paying attention to your laptop, you know, and selecting things and loading them up with the platters themselves. I just want to say that like different display modes in my review, I totally missed it. Uh, Cleveland did not miss it. He, he showed them in his, but I totally missed them. So where you can go through and you have the artwork or the, like the view, like the rain four, I missed that. But to me, I wasn't really looking for any different views because I'm very impressed with the dual waveform view and the fact you can scroll your library there, which you can't do on some other spinning platter devices from other brands. Um, so like that, I didn't even look for it, but yeah, it's cool that you've got multiple view modes in there as well. Okay, so we got one question in the chat, Jake, for you. It says, ask onboard effects or software effects? Yeah, both. Best of both worlds. So it has uh, 29 main effects. Those are the internal effects that you can access in this section here. 
There are six, you know, buttons that are kind of quick access buttons. And by default, they're echo, recycler, scale down, reverb, matrix, and echo out. But you can hold a button down and scroll with this knob and scroll through a list of 29 different effects, including those fader effects that I mentioned. And to pick one, you just, you know, just push the button, then it's saved to that pad, and you can quickly access it through there. But you can also jump over to Serato effects by uh, clicking this button here, and then that turns orange, and then these pads, these buttons align with the Serato effects. And so the wet-dry adjusts the Serato effects, and you engage them the same way. And then you can just jump back and forth to the internal effects and software effects. Plus the four channel effects, if you're not familiar with those, they align on each channel, and they're channel-specific. So you have a filter by default. If you ran an external source, it would default to filter. Then you have a filter roll, a nice noise generator, and a flanger. So 29 main effects, four channel effects, and then a plethora of software effects. A serious question, though, about the logo. Is there a possibility that we'll ever see one in a, in a firmware update, a logo on the jugs? It's, I think it's possible. Like, you think about, like, what we've done with hardware. Like, you know, the Rain 12s, you put different time codes, like, saved in there on its internal memory. I don't think that it would be outside the realm of possibility to do some sort of, you know, routing in the firmware. I mean, you can control the crossfader cut-in with the firmware. Like, you should be able to right. put a picture on your, you know, on your text. So, I don't know. The official answer is I don't know, but I would think in my limited knowledge and expertise, that it's possible. Plausible. We'll go plausible. Question. AKA DJ OK asks, uh, are the screens better than the 8Z or higher resolution quality than one the yes. one that 72? The, the screen resolutions are, are fantastic. The refresh rate is great. I Honestly, these are the best looking screens I think that Rain has put out on a device. Yeah, and I do want to show that on this, the this, this screen refresh is taken through from Serato. So if you're in Serato... There's a setting in your uh, library display. That guy right there, that's your, your screen refresh. So if you had that down to five, if you're like running that 2015 classic MacBook Pro and you're like, come on, baby, how do you have it down to five to get more CPU energy out of it? It's going to make that display like really choppy. So if you run it down to five, it carries through to the wheels. It's not Rain's fault. It's Rado. It's your fault. You're, you're <laughs> bad. Just Don't the record just is it. 30 or higher for your screen refresh, and then you'll have a nice smooth. Just having horrible flashbacks to like my 2007 white MacBook when I used to have to crank that right down and it looked like an etcher sketch. Like it was wild, like stop motion. I think we might have people getting a little confused. Um, this is not a standalone device. This is, this is a controller. It requires Serato, virtual DJ, whatever you have as far as the software is concerned to work. Without, without a plug then, you have what looks like this, which is just um, on my screen, which is basically nothing here. Just an empty device waiting for input. So I know I've seen a lot, I've seen a couple of questions now asking about whether it's standalone and what it can do. It's not standalone. But it does work as a standalone mixer. Yeah. It does work as a standalone mixer. You, you know, so if your Serato was to crash, you can still run stuff through the inputs and your mic's not gonna but die and input. stuff like that. It's a hardware mixer. Like, yes. Yeah. But no, but no USB. You can't just pop in a, a thumb drive and, and DJ. It's not what this one is. Maybe one day. Maybe one day to throw it out in the ethos and maybe one day you'll get a, a engine uh, OS controller of some kind. I'm still hoping for that, to be honest with you, but this will do in the in the, in the, in the, meantime. the short term. And you can uh, add the effects to your external sources too. So all the main effects are, uh, you know, if you use a line in or a turntable in or whatever, you can still layer your main effects here. Like I could live loop like us on the Zoom call right now because you routed in through channel four. Like... Um, so yeah, so you can use those for external sources. I have a question for you. I, we have a lot of asks now, but uh, Jake, I have an <laughs> SM7B as uh, Mojax and uh, Cleveland do. Is that powerful enough to do an SM7B? Well, there's no phantom power on it. So yeah, so you need a phantom You'll power. need a cloud booster. Yeah, but yeah, there's no phantom power. So you're gonna need an external for that. Got it, okay. So Philip Tan asks, any discussion with algorithm about integrating it with DJ Pro? Not to my knowledge yet, but as of right now, this is a Serato-only controller. I believe they haven't actually supported the 4 yet, have they? I haven't seen anything, Mojax, on that. I know um, people have been asking, but I haven't seen anything this on it. This is the bugbear of me in Cleveland, right? Like, come on, algorithm, pull it out. Like, the, how, how long has the 4 been out now? Like, where's the support for that? I don't know yet. But Virtual DJ has got to be a shoe-in, right? They, they just, they map everything. They everything probably built it before the Rain Performer was even out. They're just like, here you go. <laughs> it's already mapped. Yeah. <laughs> They just love to be ahead of the curve. So now, this is going to be a Mojax and Cleveland question. So, obviously, they're always going to keep it 100. So, here it is. 
How the rain affects compared to Pioneer? To me, that's always been a rain's weakness. The effects are good. Are they better? I think they're different because if you look through us, if they just told you, there are 29 effects on this board. So if we're looking at just the basics, whether it be Echo or Echo Out, I think both of them are fantastic. And um, I do really do love the Echo Out option on the board. It's just been fantastic for me. I use that pretty much religiously in all honesty. Uh, as far as the things like the duck down with the Rev 7, which is like the scale down, the duck down and the scale down are virt virtually the same. And in some cases, I think that some effects are better on the Rev 7. And sometimes I think the effects are better on the rain. It just depends. But they're good effects nonetheless. It's not like we're talking about Serato effects even before the update, which were just, you know, kind of questionable garbage. But you're not going to have any problems with the effects on either one of these boards. They're both very, very good. I would I would agree with that. I think there's there's some that I prefer on the Pioneer DJ side. There's some that I prefer on the Rain side. They are very good quality, and I do think they've really listened to feedback from users and people like us since the 72. I was not a fan of the effects on the 72. There was never enough depth for me on any of them, and you know they just didn't flow quite right with the 4 and with this. They have gone to a different place with effects entirely. The quality's there. Um, as I say, so there's some things I just I prefer on here. Some I prefer on like the Rev 7, but... Yeah, ultimately, these are very high quality. Like, I don't think there's quite enough depth on the reverb on here, but the Echo sounds fantastic. Yeah, but then I prefer the reverb on the S9 over the reverb on the S11. So, like, everything's got its strengths and weaknesses, and it's one of those where these effects are really high quality. There's so many of them. 29. Like, it is ludicrous. Some of them are just terrific. They're really great, really well implemented. And once we get the next version of Serato, because the version of Serato that's coming out for this later today will not have the new Serato effects in there. That's right. still version 3.2 of Serato, which is still in public beta. So as of today, Serato's effects are still hot garbage. But in that 3.2, they're much improved. So that means you've got 29 great hardware effects and the new Serato effects. It's going to take you a week to figure out which ones you want to program onto this board. Like, it's crazy. Uh, Ralph Mo asks, how durable are the new channel faders? Well, time will tell, but they should be pretty rugged, about as durable as a Mag4 cross fader, which is pretty durable. Tony Tonarm asks, does it have a hamster switch or volume fader flip or reverse switches? Yeah, so it does. So on the front, you can't see it, but uh, there's channel assignment switches. So it's uh, left, right, or through for each of the channels. So you can bypass a cross fader. You can put them all on the left side of the cross fader, right side of the cross fader. So essentially, you're hamster styling that cross fader depending on how you set up your assignment switches on the front. Yeah, you can reverse the contour. Reverse the contour on the up faders, okay. DJ Switch PDX asks, uh, does the onboard effects auto-detect BPM from analog sources? No, they don't, uh, but you'd have to tap that in. You can dial that in, your BPM, by holding shift and dialing in if you know the BPM. And the other little feature we added, so the BPM in the middle is... Uh, what your effects are going to time out at. So uh, it may be a little blurry, but on the left, there's a BPM value, and that's for you know these two channels effects, and then there's a right BPM value. We did port over a feature from the A-Track mixer. So if you have, you know have a scratch sample, I'm not going to scratch or anything, but the sample's at 99 beats per minute. So if I were to play it, it's going to echo out. Say I'm doing an echo. It's going to, it's going to echo at 99. And if I have, say, like this little beat... But it's obviously off because that's 120. But you can just do the little A-Track mixer trick where you hold shift and tap this joystick to the other side and it carries over that BPM automatically. And so that's uh, a little BPM trick. But yeah, analog sources, you're going to have to you're gonna have to go old school uh, and just tap that one and tap it in, give it a little tappy. This is a good one. This is a joke though, by the way. Is there a button to keep people away from asking for requests? Joke. Great list of effects. What's the model name for this controller? It's the Rain Performer, everybody. Performer. Yeah, spelled like a normal performer. I mean, kudos to all the clever DJs out there that put the F-O-U-R in there. It had been discussed, but for the sake of searchability and findability, we kept it with normal spelling, performer. Can we go over some of the stem stuff? Because I think that's super cool. Let's do that. We have four ways to control stems on the performer. We have, you know, the stems pad mode. We have the acapella instrumental buttons here, and we have that new stem level EQ where you can use the EQ for that. But then we have our patented stem split. And uh, I'll just do a, a very quick demo on that. I have a Serato view that makes it a little bit easier to 
process. I'm on deck one. See that up top? Everything is on deck one. Cue points jumping around. Okay, now what stem split will do, so there's nothing on channel three, it's empty. I'm on one, but the little icons up top, there's a microphone and a keyboard icon. Those align with the two channels on the fader here. So on one side, like it's smeared. So these two control stem split on this side. These two are for stem split on this side. So we're on the left side, back to that view. So when I hit stem split, that top waveform, you're gonna see it instant double and put the bottom deck number three as the a acapella. <laughs> So now we're stem split. So I have two decks. And then if I jump around with the cue points, everything follows. But why that's kind of uh, nice is now I can put effects on just the acapella or just the instrumental. The echo on there, scale it down. And then you can even grab uh, the sample and cut it up and then bring them back together. back together so it's a nice way you can chop things up and rearrange them and then if you ever wanted to exit stem split you just hit that button again puts it all back on one channel that's stem split that's how it works inside serato it just instant doubles while automatically isolating the instrumental and the acapella and keeping them locked together until you decide to grab that assignment button to manipulate the platter and then it's just a quick little double tap to kind of lock them back together so people are asking, what is your favorite effects on the unit? So I'm going to start, I'll start with Cleveland, Mojax, and then we'll go to Jake. Guys, I'm boring. Honestly, my favorite effect is echo out. Like legitimately, I use a high pass filter and uh -huh. echo out an occasional schedule down and reverb. I'd stay out right on the top. Maybe a break. I swapped out the recycler for the break. Um, but yeah, I'm really just an echo out high pass filter guy. I'm easy. What about you, Mojax? I, I am very much an echo guy. I like to have three different beat lengths of echo mm -hmm. next to each other. So I can just hit like a one beat, half beat, and three quarter echo just with one button. So three of my slots will be taken up with echoes because I'm just a delay guy. I like that kind of dubby vibes. Yeah, you can set, you can have each one set to the same thing if you want. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can, but with different, you know, and then different beat lengths. But obviously, yeah, I, I'm an Echo guy, fundamentally. The Echo one here is really good. Um, so yeah, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that. DJ Vinyl Touch asked, is the browser knob touch capacitive or does it need it to turn to bring up the library? Yeah, you got to turn it. Which is a good thing because it's also your instant double button and your select button. The other guy that you just put up uh, asked another question about if there are effects on the microphone. And the answer is yes. Jake, I don't know if you don't have your microphone on you, do you? For that. I got it plugged in right now. Right now. Right now. Okay. Yeah, so we got an echo. Um, you know, right now it's just the one division, but we have a feature request in. Shout out to Craze for, for saying, hey, we should add some different beat divisions on the echo. So sent that to the product team. They're working on it. Now we're trying to, um, I don't know when, don't quote me on it, but in a former update, we'd like to bring reverb to that mic. Seems odd that it's called mic effects and not mic yeah. echo. So I was kind of looking in the settings for another, like an option for a reverb or something. I'd like to see that. And on the subject of mic, there's tons of options in the menu to, you know, like I have it set up in my headphones on this one. I have it routed to the computer for, you know, streaming. You can choose to route it to any of those or not route it to any of those, or you can send it to your booth output or not send it to your booth output. So a lot of options there. DJ Vinyl Touch, are there any control placement that may have gotten in your way while playing, accidentally hitting the sync or something because of the platter placement? Yes or no? Anybody? Uh... No, not that. But Cleveland, I'm with you on this. Go for it. Tell them. You tell them because I'm with you. The issue I, I have is um, where the pitch bend and the key adjust are. So if you can see it right here. They're relatively close to one another. So, you know, if you're trying to just kind of just press buttons, it's really easy to hit the wrong button. So I've hit the key adjust when I've been trying to do the pitch bend. But again, I know it's muscle memory and I know for some people, you're gonna learn to overlook it. I have been using it for a while. I still to this day do hit the button on occasion. That's really it. I, I'm just gonna MIDI map them out and call it a day. It's really the only buttons that are questionable to me. Everything else is pretty good on the board. 
And same for you, Mojax, right? Yeah, I mean, it, there's that one. I have a few times changed key by mistake, but I'll just mini map them to something else and make that not happen. I mean, it, it's interesting because it never really occurred to me until there was a comment on my video, someone saying, oh, I, I prefer the vertical, you know, the battle style layout. It hadn't actually occurred to me that this isn't battle style because the pitch faders are really out of the way. It's, you know, that Rain 1, for example, you know, that's a great device, but it's quite a bit smaller. Cramped. And there is an element of crampage on there, like it's a little bit cramped. With this, it's so large and so big, there's no issue of like, oh, I'm accidentally going to hit the pitch slider when I'm cutting or anything like that, because there is plenty of room here. So from that point of view, yeah, there's really no issues with the layout apart from just yet. It's because I just naturally... Your fingers go to those two buttons and you think I'm pitch bending and then you go, and it's like that. It's not, you know, there's always things that personally I remap on any device with Serato and I just choose to have my own little tweak. Like I, I love, you know, the, the quantize, there's a quantize button on the top, you know, which is great to have handy silent cue and sensor. I know Cleveland, you'd prefer to have two buttons for that, but there's always stuff that you might want to map differently, but in terms of the physical layout. I've got no beef with anything on here at all. It's all very comfortable and very easy. Chris Deza asked, compared to the Rain 1, how much bigger is this beast? Also, any word on a road case? I mean, it's a, a four-channel unit. The platter is yeah, bigger. It's big. It is yeah. big. It's uh, quite a bit bigger. One thing with the cases, though, you will find that almost every case and, like, soft case and everything else that fits the Rain 4, which has been around for over a year, will also fit this because physically the bodies are very, very similar. There's a little extra bit sticking out the front for the crossfader adjust for the tension. Um, so a deck saver will not fit. And I made the guys from deck saver really sad because they sent me a four deck saver and I tried it on here. I was like, nah, guys, it's not going to fit just because of that one little bit. Um, so they had to make another one for the performer. But yeah, all your cases and everything else, you know, like I see uh, the jetpack crew in the house. I'm, anything that fits the four will also fit this. I've been carrying this in a soft bag. I've got an Odyssey, uh, like a soft case that fits the Prime 4. So I like move some foam around inside. And like, I mean, the thing is 28 pounds, this thing, right? It is not a light boy. The size is not just the weight. It's the size and the weight combined. Like when you're swinging that in one arm, you know, I'm mo jacked these days, but still it's a lot to carry from the car to the bar. So just bear that in mind. It, the Rain 4 is like a two thirds of the weight of this. I will say though, it is um, seven pounds lighter than the uh, NS7. So, you know, if you're down, if you're upgrading from one of those, it'll be like a <laughs> like a small little controller for you. So, Jake, how big are the platter? So the the top is seven inch, like a forty five. Uh, the platter itself, if you go end to end, it's eight and a half inches. It is yeah. basically yeah. seven, but it's slightly over seven. Uh, and obviously you're not going to be putting regular vinyl on this. It's not like a Rain 1 where you're going to swap out for, maybe you might want to put a 45 on there because these platters are obviously the unique setup that they've got. Yep. But yeah, it's just a tiny bit bigger than 7. Good uh, good call. So DJ Lab, uh, why doesn't the effects work on the external input? Oh, they do. The main effects do. So the ones all that you can navigate in the middle, all the 29, those work on external inputs. Channel effects are software effects in, Ser in Serato. So if you have an external input, all the channel effects knobs just default to filter. But you can, in your settings, you can actually adjust the resonance of your filter and save it. So, but yeah, they default to filter with external. But yeah, all your main, main effects work with whatever external source you have. Is this wider across than the SZ2? The SZ was a big boy. So what do you guys think? I would say it's probably pretty close. Um, I think the SZ... Yeah, I think so. I think the SZ might be bigger than this. Yeah, SZ was bigger because it was uh, essentially two Bruh. CDJs and the Mixer X Nexus 900. So, yeah, I think that actually might be wider. I, I It might be. Bigger than the Prime 4, Jason one asked. Bigger than the Prime 4. Is it? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, how big the Prime it's, 4 is. It's not, it's not as deep. It pulled up, yeah, it was deep.